is JP Presvento, the Fox C6 Ed Tech Coordinator, and today I am going to show you how we can help students create interactive timelines with Google Docs and Google Drawing. Google Docs, as you know, is Google's documentation software, very similar to Microsoft Word, and Google Drawings is a very underutilized tool in the um, Google Drive suite. It allows users to create a wide variety of images and posters and we can even pull in interactive objects um, by linking to different parts of um, our Google Drive, pulling in YouTube videos and web links. To get an idea as to what this interactive timeline will look like, let's go ahead and take a look at a finished product. So here um, I have pulled up a little timeline that I just threw together and you see the background image and you see just a few items of note from the Revolutionary War. And what the really cool thing about these interactive timelines in Google Docs or Google um, Drawings is that over here you see a link on this Stamp Act of 1765 and what we actually did we linked to a Google Doc where the student actually did some writing about the Stamp Act and they gave a little analysis. Um, further on in the document, we here linked to um, some information about the Intolerable Acts. And on the Boston Tea Party, we even created a um, reenactment, posted it to YouTube, and shared the link. So as you can see, these um, timelines, these interactive timelines are great tools and we'll be able to use them to different, do a lot of differentiating. Um, maybe some students will have pull in resources they find on the web. Um, other students in other grade levels will have them create their own original resources to put into their timeline. So to see how we can put this all together, let's head on over to my Google Drive. So here we are in my drive and I went ahead and created a folder for interactive timeline where I'm going to go ahead and keep all the documents for this project. Um, but as a teacher, you obviously could assign this through Google Classroom and give the students a template to build off of and create their own documents in. So I'm going to go ahead and open up this folder and create a Google Drawing. So once I'm in my folder, I'm going to go ahead in my drive and head on over to New. And then I'll go down to More and open up Google Drawings. Now, if you assign this template through Google Classroom, it will already be named for your students. But in this case, um, we just went ahead and created a drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and name it um, Revolutionary War Timeline. Once I've given my timeline a name, um, one great thing we can do is actually change the surface area that students have available to them when they are creating. So to give a larger or smaller space to create on, I'm going to go ahead and go over to File and Page Setup. And then here I have a few options. I can say Standard or Widescreen, or I can have a Custom screen. So maybe you want something that would replicate a sheet of paper. You can do it 11 by 8.5 inches and hit OK and you'll see how that will resize. For me, I personally like the 16 by 10 widescreen display. So to create my timeline, the first thing I'm going to do is use this line tool right here at the top. And I'll add a line. And I'll just go ahead and create this line most of the way across the page. And it looks like it's pretty straight. Um, right up here, I will adjust the um, thickness of the line, take it up to eight points, like so. And then I will go ahead and put in another little line segment that will have the end of the line. And you may notice right now that um, we have those red lines that kind of shows when things or items are centered. And I want to go ahead and um, duplicate this end mark and put on the other end. To do that, I'll go ahead and hit Control D on my keyboard or Command D if you are using a Mac. And that will duplicate the line. Now that I've made my basic timeline, um, I'm going to go ahead and create a marker and a text box. To create the marker, I'm going to go ahead and come up here to Shapes. 
And I'm going to put a little diamond shape in here. I know you may want to use a line as well, but I'm going to go ahead and use this diamond shape just because I like the way it looks. And we notice right now it has a black outline with blue on the interior, so I'm going to go ahead and highlight it again. I'm going to click on the paint can that says fill color and change that to red. And I'll go ahead and click on the pencil that says line color and change that to red as well. And then I'll go ahead and add a text box right above it. And there are those red lines again to show I have centered the object. And I can go ahead and start typing in my text box to enter the first item on my timeline. So now that I have my first box uh, pretty much squared away, you notice it doesn't have a border around it, so I'll click in this text box and come over here to where it says line weight and give it a line weight of 2. Now that I have this, I will go ahead and highlight it and copy it and paste it over here so I can recreate that for my second text box. I'll go ahead and do that all the way down for all of the text boxes on my timeline. So now I have all of my events on my timeline, and please excuse me if I left off anything important. I was not a history teacher. Um, so now what I want to do, maybe when it comes to the Stamp Act of 1765, I had my students write up a summary or analysis or do some sort of writing about that activity. And I had them create it in their Google Docs. So I'm going to head on over to my Google Docs where I have already created that assignment. I'm going to get the link and paste it over here. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here I am in my timeline folder, and I'm going to go ahead and look at this document, the Stamp Act Analysis. And I'm going to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to go ahead and grab the link, and I'm going to copy it, and come back on over here to the Stamp Act of 1765. I'm going to highlight. And then in my Google Drawings, after I highlight it, I'm going to come up here, and you have this chain link icon. And if you hover over it, it says Insert Link, so I'm going to click there. And here, I'm just going to go ahead and paste that document that I created. When you're pasting that document, um, just keep in mind that your students will need to make sure the document is shared with you. Um, or with anyone in Foxy Six Schools so that you will be able to view the document when you go to grade the timeline. So I went ahead and added another link with the Declaration of Independence. And maybe over here you have um, another group of students that need to find a YouTube video that has to do with one of these other topics like the Boston Tea Party. So maybe they went ahead on over to YouTube and found the link they needed. And we'll just say it's this one right over here. We'll do the same thing. We'll copy that link, come back on over to the document, go to the Boston Tea Party, highlight the text, hit the Insert Link button, and paste that link. So here we go. Now, um, in order to make our timeline look a little bit prettier, we want to add a nice image um, in the background. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up a Google image search. And I'm going to search for the American flag and try and find an image that will fit in the background. So I went ahead and found um, a couple possible images. And I'm going to take a look at this one right here. And I think I... I like that one. I see that it's a bigger file size, so I'll go ahead and click View Image and copy that image and paste it back in my document. So now I'll go ahead and paste this picture in my document. And we'll notice a couple of things right off the bat. First, we'll notice that it covered up um, all the text. To bring our text to the front, we're going to go ahead and right click on the image. We'll click Order and Send to Back. That means it will be the last item on there and everything else will be in front of it. We notice, though, that it's still a little bit hard to read some of the text with the picture here. So we're going to go ahead and click on Image Options up here at the top. 
and we get a few options here. The first thing I'm going to do is adjust the transparency so the document is or the image is a little see-through. We'll make it about 50% transparent. That seems like it's a bit much, so we'll kick that back a little bit. And I can also adjust the brightness and contrast of the image to modify it just a little bit. And I kind of like the way this looks, so we're going to leave this here like so. And then I can go ahead and close out those image options. So again, I adjusted the transparency to make the image more see-through, and I could also adjust the brightness and contrast of the image to slightly modify the way it looks to fit my taste. So now we have a timeline, and all we have to do now is add a title, which will be a little text box. And I'll just go ahead and title my poster here. And now that I've titled my poster, or my timeline, it is all wrapped up. As a student, all I'll need to do is go into Google Classroom and submit it. I hope you have found this little tutorial useful. Uh, this has been JP Presavento, the Fox C6 EdTech Coordinator, demonstrating how to create interactive timelines with Google Docs and Google Drawings.